Hi everybody, this is the GoTo family. Today we're in Hue, Vietnam. We're in the central part of Vietnam. This is a historical city. This was the last imperial capital in Vietnam. So this city is full of historical monuments. Today we're touring with Huh? Yes, nice to meet you. Yeah, my name is Ha. I'm very happy to be the tour guide of the Robins family. <laughs> We're touring the tomb of the 12th emperor. His name was Hai Ding. And this is just, uh, it's a marvel to experience. Uh, you just have to see. We're just going to take you on a little tour around here. We're, we're going to give you some more information about why Hue is important, why this site in particular is important. So let's go check it out. So this tomb took 11 years to finish uh, being built. It was started during Emperor Hai Ding's life and it was completed about six years after his death. So it took a long time and a big reason for that is because of all the mosaics that are found inside. So they wanted to make this burial ground right here, this tomb, as spectacular and as marvelous as it can be. And we're just about to head on the inside. The Emperor's Tomb is right behind me, right there. That's his final resting place of Emperor Hai Ding. And you can see this big bronze statue that is sitting on top. That was cast in France, of course, the French connection with Vietnam. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous statue. Just a very nice and solemn place here. And uh, there is a lot of artwork that, that has gone in, not only into the, into the statue, but also into the surroundings, the walls, as well as the ceilings. Everything tells a story right here. All right, so just made a little quick pit stop for a new hat because it's so crazy hot here. Must be at least 38 degrees, if not more. So it's really hot. You really need head protection. So, there we go. Sporting a brand new look while we go and explore our second stop on our list, which is going to be the tomb of Emperor Mingma. The tomb of Emperor Mingma. I was looking for an answer there, I didn't get it, but it is a tomb of Emperor Mingma, who is also the second emperor of the Nguyen dynasty, which ran from 1803 until 1945. This spot is not overly touristy. This is great. It's very quiet, very tranquil, very serene, and it's absolutely stunning, absolutely beautiful. As you enter, you're greeted with these statues and uh, in this courtyard. Now, our first stop was maybe slightly more Western influence. This is very Asian, of course. Uh, Emperor Min Mang was Emperor number two, so still very early on, and uh, the Asian, especially Chinese influence, was still very, very strong here since the French took over a little after. And you can see that gold color on the roof, and that is the color for emperors. And uh, if that color is green instead of gold, that would signify that this would be the burial place of a Mandarin. But if it's gold, it's for an emperor. So everything here is basically built in a straight line. So Ming Meng was a simple man. He likes simple things, symmetry in particular, from the beginning where the gate opens all the way to the end. So right now we're just about to check out the Bright Pavilion 
uh, which was built to com commemorate his intelligence, of course, because he was not only the most uh, important or uh, the most successful or popular emperor, he was also the most intelligent. They don't know exactly where Min Mang was buried. They assume that it was somewhere at the end because everything here is straight. So a straight line, his body being at the end of that would make sense. But they don't know for 100% for sure where he is. If you want to have drinks, if you want to have a rest stop just to refresh, which you might need it because it's so blistering hot here, they have a little rest stop right after the Bright Pavilion where you can have drinks and enjoy the scenery. It's absolutely gorgeous, but we are having a boat ride, so we're gonna have drinks on the boat. That's where we're heading to next. All right, so we just got on a boat. This is the Perfume River right here. We're gonna be on here for about an hour or so. We're gonna tour the river. This is the perfect getaway from that intense UA heat. It feels good to be here under the shade. It's magical to have this breeze just flowing by. This is what I feel like doing. Oh, this just feels unbelievable right now. And just watching the world go by. So behind me have the Heavenly Lady Pagoda. So what a beautiful name. This was built in 1601. And I just have to love those romantic names. So this was before the Nguyen Dynasty, but the Lord that built this was actually an ancestor of the Nguyen. So it is still related. You can definitely tell that this is Tibetan influenced uh, the northern style of Buddhism here in Vietnam. Uh, you, can, you can tell by the colors, a little darker, a little more on the brown or dark orange side. Just has a little more austere kind of feel to it. Uh, and you can see the monk praying in there. So this is basically very much a working uh, prayer hall right here. And there is a spot that you can't access unless you're actually praying. So very nice, very serene right over here, very peaceful, so I shouldn't talk too loudly. So it's time to break up the day. Right now, we're just at the spot called Le Jardin de la Carambal. It's a little restaurant that's just close to the Citadel, which is a spot we're going to see next. But it's nice to break up the day, especially when it's crazy hot outside. So you wanna come here and you wanna grab a couple of drinks, grab some food. It's a nice decor in here. Kind of traditional, a little French, of course the name is French, but they also have a lot of traditional Vietnamese items on the menu. We got a couple of them. All right, so this is the Bang Quai. So basically a crispy pancake, local food here from Hue. So the outside is a rice flour cake, pancake that is, uh, that is fried. Inside we have some shrimp, we have some pork, uh, I believe we have some green onions, and we also have some mushrooms in there. Try it. Mmm. Mm. Mm, that is so good. Mm. The pork inside is so flavorful. Oh, the mushrooms just juicy, tender, and uh, slightly crunchy. But that rice pancake's just so flavorful, and it's actually a little thicker than you expect. But it's it's quite easy to uh, to chew on. It's very crispy, very delicious, really really nice. So I'm gonna taste this. It's kind of green. I wonder how it tastes. Out of zero to ten, I would give it. Da -da -da. Wow. So this is the ban nam. So basically it's a rice flour. This is a soft pancake, so a steam pancake. And this comes with uh, basically pork and shrimp. 
inside of it. So what you do is, they come steam in these banana leaves. What you do is you open them up and then you pour some fish sauce on it. Uh, you don't have to pour too much. I believe that that meat, that shrimp meat and that pork meat is already gonna be floured, thank you very much. And uh, you just pour, pour a little bit and then you roll them up and you eat them. So I did that. I kind of massacred mine a little bit. It's possible I might have put a little too much fish sauce. So maybe that's something you don't want to do. So here we go. Also I have some green onions in there. Mm. Oh man. That is unbelievable. That is so, so good. Mm. Fish sauce just gives it a little bit of saltiness, but the flavors in there are just so nice and fresh. Mm. That shrimp, nice, beautiful texture, perfectly cooked. Pork, very, actually it's a very mild porky flavor, I gotta say, it's not overly porky. Oh, it's more about the, uh, the shrimp, and actually you can get a little taste of those onions that they put in there. All in all, the rice pancakes really brings it together really nicely with that soft, slightly chewy texture. And the fish sauce just adds that extra saltiness, that extra element to kind of just bind everything together. That's really delicious. And now for the main courses, I got a beef fried noodles, which is one of my favorite things to eat in Vietnam. It just makes the most delicious beef fried noodles. So always a go-to menu item for me. So we can see we got a lot of uh, coriander in the middle. We got some tomatoes in there. We have some fresh green onions as well, as well as some carrots and some cabbage. So a lot of goodies in there. And these of course are egg noodles right here. Let's do it. Mm. I got so much of that coriander, wow. A lot of freshness popped in my mouth. Noodles are nice, perfectly cooked. Sauce is a very light sauce. Slightly salty. Beef is perfectly cooked, like I've come to expect in Vietnam. This is just a delicious dish. There's lots of fresh greens in here. Oh, it's gonna make for a nice mixture with that beef. All right, so we're in the Imperial Palace. This palace was built in 1804, well, between 1804 until 1833 by the first and second emperors of the Nguyen Dynasty. It was finished by Ming Ma, the same guy whose tomb we went to see earlier, just before, in fact. And right here at the entrance, it has five gates. So the main gate was reserved for the emperor and the emperor only. You could not pass through there if you wanted to and we went through by the gate that was just west of it. But this place was important because this was basically the place of uh, you know, conducting a government business basically where foreign delegates would come and where the local administration uh, would, would hold them and provide parties for, for foreign delegations and things like that. So this was a very important place. It was almost like a presidential house of sorts back in the 19th century. So behind me we have the Supreme Harmony Palace. I love that name. So this is basically where the emperor, uh, as well as his family and the four highest ranking mandarins, members of the court, they used to meet. Uh, and uh, this is where the coronation basically used to happen. So really nice, no photos, no camera inside, but really nice. And this is just the first step right here as we're exiting into the courtyard and we're gonna see some more beautiful buildings and some more architecture. So now we're walking in the Forbidden City. This was the place where only the emperor and the royal family could have access. Now, unfortunately, some of the buildings here have been destroyed. There used to be the, uh, this I believe was the empress's uh, house or, you know, uh, palace and then the emperor's uh, over there. But most of it has been destroyed. Of course, Vietnam has had a couple of wars, so some of these buildings have fallen casualty during that time.
that completes our city tour here in Hue, Vietnam. This city is unbelievable, a super charming city, a city you must come and visit. It just has this undeniable charm. You will absolutely fall in love with the city. I know I have. So we hope you enjoyed our city tour of the city today. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos from the GoTo family as well as the bell for notifications so that you can stay up to date. No cupcakes. There are no cupcakes. The bell is a cupcake. The thumbs up is a cupcake. <laughs> Everything's a cupcake. Our the camera is a cupcake. So don't, <laughs> so don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos from the GoTo family. We'll see you on the next one.